All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Ayolonge, uh, for your introduction and for giving us information about how we will conduct this webinar. And I would like to thank the team of AFLIA who organized this seminar for us, especially with their technical services that they did. And as Dr. Ayolonga have said, uh, that we are going to have a, a good discussion uh, at the end of the uh, of my presentation. Uh, now, the importance of qualitative and standardized LIS education for Africa, which is a very important also time to have conversation and discussion and also come up with a standardized allies education for Africa. The reason is now we have AFLIA, the African Library and Information Association and Institutions AFLIA. The only Continental Library Association in the world, which we have to be very proud of, how African librarians have come together and established such a dynamic organization. So it is also up to the allies educators as well as librarians also now to use this opportunity and come up with the standard for allied education for Africa. Why is this necessary? Because students who graduate from allies schools in Africa will graduate with the same standard of, edu standard of educational background, which will help Africa to develop library and information science of high quality based on those standards. And the other purpose is, as some of you know, there are a lot of things going on in LIS education around the world, especially in the Northern part of the world, like Europe and North America, and to some extent also in developing countries. Uh, and this development, as you know, is the change of the name, library, dropping the L word, coming with information science, and going into I schools and so on and so forth. So in many ways for allies to schools in developing countries, it is a kind of confusion in many ways with this change of name, with the change of the curriculum, that kind of thing. So in order to prevent also those kinds of confusions in Africa, through AFLIA, we have to come up with some standardized allied education for Africa, which everyone accepts us, which everyone also supports us and participate in this standard. Let me just try to change this. Okay, here we go. All right. Now the uh, points of interest, as I have said, why standards and quality assessment of library programs 
are important for Africa, as I have already mentioned that. Now, the other thing to do is already we have a committee or a group within AFLIA, which Dr. Ayolonge is a chair, either through that group or forming within that group a committee in AFLIA that will look at the standards and developing of standards. Then inputs from the profession. Probably it requires that we need to do some kind of survey and to get data about the, LIS edu the current LIS education in Africa. At what stage it is, what kind of format, what kind of curriculum, and so on and so on. Trying to understand what's going on. And after that, to make a decision about the standard and implementation. So those are just a suggestion how we will go by. Now, as Henry Ford has said, I just brought this quotation. I think it has a lot of validity in our discussion. Said, I quote, if money is your hope for independence, you will never have it. The only real security that a man will have in this world is a reserve of knowledge, experience, and ability. So that is what it is. It is about knowledge. How do we make a reserve of knowledge for Africa? And how do we use this knowledge to create experiences? More experienced people who have the ability, as we are going to discuss, take Africa forward. Now, looking at Aflia's mission, it's very important to look at that in our discussion. As it says, I quote, to empower the library and information community to actively promote the African development agenda through dynamic services that transform livelihoods. To promote the African development agenda. And how do we develop this agenda that mentions, uses different kind of development, education, uh, uh, economic, political, social, and all this. It requires, again, the reserve of knowledge in many ways, highly organized knowledge, which libraries really provide. Without that, without libraries, let us say, in general, it is difficult to achieve that development agenda for Africa in many ways. Because all these experts, all these professionals, all these institutions that work toward development of that agenda need this access to information. And libraries are the center of providing those information and knowledge that they need for the development. Because no nation can develop without having a strong library and information science or libraries, let us say, without having that, because it is about accessing knowledge. It is that knowledge that generates development, that leads development in many ways. So we have to make clear for our policymakers in Africa the importance of organizing knowledge, the importance of libraries in national development in many ways. 
we have to start that kind of conversation also for, with policy makers. And that requires a lot of lobbying and high quality librarians also in many ways who are well uh, educated and aware of the importance of knowledge and to use that to educate also the policymakers as well as the community itself in Africa. So that is the direction we are going, especially when we have Africa, Aflia, I think it is, I will say, easier to do those kinds of uh, uh, work. Now, the African agenda, because that is what we are aiming at in many ways, as also Aflia described for us. If we look at it from 2013 to, to 2063, where the African Union in May 2013 have declared, I quote, the declaration marked the rededication of Africa towards the attainment of the Pan-African vision of an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, driven by its own citizens, representing a dynamic force in the international arena. Now, if we look at this declaration, unquote, declaration, driven by its own citizens, it says. So that means it is own citizens, African citizens, have to create all this different uh, development uh, agendas. So we are responsible as librarians and library educators to take that responsibility to develop that, especially in our area, starting with development of standards in many ways. Africans have to develop because until now, as I have seen not only in Africa, in many developing countries, it is about copying, about following other regions or nations uh, standards or programs in library information science, and especially in terms of development of curriculums and so on. But now Africa, to develop this agenda, to reach this agenda, it has to develop its own standards, which we are going to discuss in, in details later on. It is own for Africans, based on African needs, on Africa's needs in many ways. Okay? on Africa's needs because standards or curriculums are developed for countries based on their needs. What kind of standard, what kind of curriculum do they need in terms of education of their institution, of their, of their citizens? So we have to think in that terms now, okay? In that terms. So those are very important uh, directions in many ways when we uh, develop those standards, what are the purpose and what are the mission, what are the objectives of developing those standards, what are we trying to achieve in many ways for Africa, let us say for African library and information science in many ways. So our, our discussion should be also directed toward uh, this kind of uh, issues. Now, the assessment, the assessment goals, the establishment. Why do we do that? To ensure that LIS educational institutions meet appropriate standards of quality and integrity in many ways. All LIS educational institutions in Africa and AFLIA is a leader in this, 
And that is why we establish AFLIA in many ways, is to bring together the African librarians and create a common mission, a common goal. And AFLIA, as an African representative, and by the way, recognized by African Union also, just like African Union is responsible in bringing African nations together and make them work toward their goals, their objectives in addressing many issues that they face. Similarly, we have an institution, AFLIA, who takes over this responsibility of creating a qualitative standard for allies education, just like the American Library Association has done for the 50 library school in the United States and seven library schools in Canada, like 57 schools, have to have or have similar standards that they are assessed on by ALA. So in that way, students who graduate from any library school in the United States and Canada have similar educational background based on that. And to improve what? Number two, bullet two, to improve the quality of education of LIS schools in Africa. The quality, okay, based on those standards. So these are our assessment goals in many ways that we will develop in details, of course. What are the be benefits of quality control? As you know, in other sectors, there are a lot of discussion about quality control, quality control of products, that kind of a thing, okay? To make it uh, more marketable, more usable, that kind of a thing. But in education also, it is very important to have that kind of way of control, quality control. Quality control assures AFLIA members and the public that graduates from LIA schools in Africa has received quality LIA's education. Assures the students that AFLIA programs meet the standards of the profession they seek to, let's say, enter. They look at AFLIA's uh, standard for library information science education, and they say, I will join this program because of it is quality, because of it is standard, for example. And it will help us to recruit a lot of students who will also, in return, graduate with high standard LIS education. Even collaboration among AFLIAS members, nations, let us say, in exchange of librarians or hiring of librarians who, let us say, graduated from Zambia can easily work in Ghana if there are opening or job, if they want to have that kind of person because they have the same quality of education from the same standard in Zambia or in Ghana or in Nigeria or in Kenya or in Senegal or in Burkina Faso or all this. So they have the same quality. And then it helps also to strengthen the education group, education section in AFLIA in coming together and discuss common issues, common concerns. Just like I came, well, I say this morning at 1 a.m. from a conference of Elise 
association of library information science of education that brings together LIS education in, let us say, North America, here in uh, US and Canada, okay? That had a conference, still going on the conference. What are they doing? They are discussing many issues, curriculum issues, student issues, uh, and many other issues they discuss every year by coming together. We can do similar, that it will help us to do also similar things for Africa within, let us say, AFLIA in many ways, where AFLIA have different also sections, committees and groups. So this will be already one of it who will discuss the LIS education in progress and improvement also of the standards as, as, as we go on, all right? So those are the, the benefits of it. So, and also it is time, as we have said, the African agenda, if we want to reach in 2063, we have all, also less than 50 years, what, like 44 years, maybe. Within that, or before that, we need to achieve, or we need to have these standards in place and start the conversation and discussion from today on. Now, the assessment or quality control, what is it? What will it address, if we say? Now, every school had mission, goals, and objectives of the institution, right? Even required to develop that by the parent institution. They are within an institution of higher education, like universities, let us say requires them to do that. Now the standard also requires to clarify based on the standards that has been developed, library schools to clarify and state their mission, goals, and objective. What are they trying to achieve based on the standard that has been established? So they have to do that as a standard one, as a standard one which they will be also assessed on, judged on, with the quality of their mission, goals, and objective, if it is attainable and so on, all right? A kind of a strategic study, strategic thinking in many ways. So that is what standard one will look at, okay, for, for LIS schools. And then the second one is the curriculum. How about their curriculum? How are is developed? How are they improved? Okay. And what kind of courses are taught in many ways? Already within the standard that has been described. So they look at that and then try to develop their standards within that, in many ways, the curriculum. Uh, student, for example, achievement. Everything that the curriculum talks about, okay? And then, of course, the faculty. Uh, what kind of educational background, for example, is needed for the faculty? At what level, for example, their educational levels are? Is it at the master's level, PhD level? That will be decided by the standard which requires the uh, background, educational background of the faculty. And what are they involved in? In research, for example, they have to produce research, they have to write. And teaching, for example, okay. teaching in many ways, what are they teaching? Okay, the quality of their teaching and all of this will be also assessed uh, in that because the objective, as I have said, is to have the same standard for every school. And then the other standard is students, let us say. Uh, how do they admit their students? With what kind of educational background? 
or experienced background that they admit to the students, because that has to be also standardized. If it is a master's program, of course, they need to have a bachelor's degree before they enter. Okay. And then financial support will be another thing with the standard we will do. How do the, uh, uh, the parent institution support us the program? Okay, how do they fund the program in many ways? What kind of assistance they give to the, uh, to, to the school, let us say, or to the program? Okay, that will help the program continue to develop and to educate students for the nation, let us say, in many ways. Do they support it in the way support is needed with that kind of program? especially providing salaries or providing scholarship for the students and so on and so forth. A lot of things are needed, as you know. And then last but not least, uh, these are just examples I have uh, laid down, is the ICT, Information Communication Technologies, which we use today to manage libraries to provide services to access i mean technology has become a uh, is playing a big role in our profession how about that how do they educate students and using technology for example in providing services uh, uh using using technology and so on and so forth okay that has to be clearly identified and requirement through the standard for the assessment of the uh, of the school for example has to be done so uh, so the quality control of the mission of the curriculum of the faculty of the student the financial support will be the standard in many ways the standards will be put for all these areas that allies the schools must follow it is a must follow which if aflia who is responsible in administering those standard if they have met this standard that aflia requires they will be certified as one of the li schools that have that has met the standard in many ways certified in many ways where we call here uh, uh, in the united states and canada accreditation it is called but aflia will develop a name and a topic for that uh, in this area and then will certify and will have an african certified logo uh, certified by aflia this is cool let us say and they will use that to recruit a student they will use that also to uh, seek uh, support from foundation or from their governments and so on is a school that has been recognized by the African Library Information Science Association, puts it in a higher level in many ways, quality wise. Okay, so those are what the standards are going to uh, address in many ways. All right. And of course, it requires a lot of work, of course, but we have to start somewhere in many ways to develop that. And as we are going to talk later on, how the, uh, this uh, standards of quality control are a standard, uh, are managed uh, in many ways. All right. Now, categories for quality control. It starts with the library school, for example, now all library schools will be informed about the development uh, and the presentation of these uh, standards and availability of these standards. Uh, Afli will, let us say, inform library schools who will be interested to work with Aflia in meeting 
this stand out in terms of quality control? If they say yes, then of course they have to go through a process, a process and they're being an application for quality control, let us say, and then the work starts. That means they will be uh, given the level of pre-candidates. So they have to meet certain requirements uh, in order to start the process, certain requirements they have to meet. Africa, uh, Aflia will set up that. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they will be pre-candidate, let us say for maybe two years, three years, it depends the amount of time it, re it, it requires to go through that pre-candidate. And if they meet and uh, they are ready, really uh, organized to work with AFLIA in the area of those standards and quality control, they become a candidate in many ways. They become a candidate. Uh, and then they get the initial certification that they have met the standard and now they are a part of AFLIA's quality control. And then continuous with the development of their uh, program uh, based on the changes AFLIA makes in those standards and probably they come for again quality control an assessment, as you know, probably in your own institutions uh, within maybe five, seven years, depending how AFLIA will set up a time that they have to come up again for quality control. That means if they continued with the what the, the standard says, what the standard requires in many ways. But now re remember, between this time, between their initial certification and their quality control years, let's say five years, six years or seven years, there will be a lot of communication. If there are changes in the program and so on, they will inform AFLIA, who is uh, an office, let us say, who will be responsible for that, okay? And prepare themselves for the next uh, quality control. And if they meet, again, that standards, they will be continue to be certified again. If they don't meet in one or two, let us say in uh, curriculum or in faculty, they will be put on conditional certification, conditional. So they have to correct those errors uh, or adjust uh, and to the requirement of the standard, they will be put on conditional certification. Once they correct that uh, error, whatever happens, uh, they will get back to their continued certification. But if they don't meet those standards again, they will be withdrawn from the quality control uh, area that AFLIA decides what happens after that. But that's the way it works. So that means it's a very serious system, serious standard that library schools follow in many ways and work with AFLIA and be a part of AFLIA in uh, uh, putting all this standard into, uh, into action. So that's the way uh, it works, all right? So Africa, AFLIA's responsibility is to be responsible for the execution of the assessment program. AFLIA takes that responsibility, execution, execu uh, uh, execution of the assessment program, as I have said, and to develop and formulate standards for uh, education for library information, education in Africa, as I have said. So one organization, one voice, okay? One Africa, one voice. There won't be any other institution who will uh, 
make a, a standard and quality control. Only one institution for Africa, and that is AFLIA in many ways. So that has been agreed upon in many agreed, it will be agreed upon and or it is agreed upon when AFLIA was established as a voice of African librarians in many ways, to have one voice, just like African Union is a voice of Africa or African nations in many ways. You don't have two uh, African unions around or three, you have one who speaks for the whole of Africa, who works together with African nations. So similarly in our profession, we have that kind of organization and makes it easier also to work. There won't be any confusion. There won't to be any kind of conflict or anything. We have one organization. If somebody has a question or suggestion, they come to Afli because Afli has a meeting every year, a conference or every year or every other year, whatever decision has been made or it is, they come to that conference and uh, present their uh, ideas and so on. Okay. If there are regional organizations, that's okay, but I'm sure they are a member of AFLIA. So they also a part of it in many ways. Okay. That's AFLIA's uh, decision in many ways. You don't go into that. AFLIA's policy, but for education, that's the way I think it should work. Well, uh, okay. Now, guiding principles. Guiding principles. The quality control of library and information studies allows educational programs is coordinated through a single agency, as I am saying that represents the interests of the members of the profession. Interest of the members of the profession, the profession has agreed upon. Okay, so that guiding principles are very, very important to understand that we work for the interest of Africa. Okay, and this association stands for the interest of Africa, okay? That is, I think, very, very important. If we would like to have a standard quality control, <laughs> so that quality control must follow one standard in many ways. The so scope of Aplias assessment, these are just suggestions and I'm just putting for maybe discussions and so on, but it could be identified through the survey that I have sent, I have said AFLIA will send to all allies programs in Africa. What kind of programs they have at what level? Is that at the master's level or undergraduate level? Okay, and then we have to think in terms of what kind of quality of education, what kind of quality of professionals are needed for Africa. So that will be decided by AFLIA, okay? Uh, for example, here in the United States, I give you an example, just examples, that until 1950, it was undergraduate in the US. In mid 1950s, they changed it into master's level. So from mid 1950s up to now, the requirement for library information science degree is masters only in the United States. And they have a reason that they have done that in many ways, because of the change of the society, of the economy, of technology and so on, it required students with a four year undergraduate and one or two years qualification uh, qualification of library information science program. Okay, over the masters, over the, I'm sorry, over the undergraduate. Okay, so 
it is up to the association to decide that based on the needs of Africa. What does Africa need to achieve the goals, the agenda that has been forward? What kind of quality librarians are needed in many ways? The standards decides in many ways. The association decides, okay? Masters, undergraduate, whatever it is, but it is decided by that. Let us say scope of the affiliate assessment program. All right. Now, uh, responsibility of office of AFLIA, let us say. AFLIA will create an office or a committee or whatever. I put this just as an example. Providers in implementing the assessment quality process, as I have um, uh, said, especially in the planning, okay, and providing leadership, in providing secretarial function, in planning, for example, saying what library schools uh, is ready to go for assessment of quality control. There, there must be plans and how those assessments are done and who's going to do it, for example, okay? Uh, from forming a special committee from the librarians and educators who will assess that kind of program. So it requires a lot of planning. So they will do planning and they provide leadership, of course, in this area. Uh, and then secretarial function as they are doing now for the uh, for their members and then provide uh, information to graduate programs potential students employers affiliate members the press and the general public about the assessment process policies and procedures and assessment status of a specific allies program in africa so they will be, as I have said, the voice where people can get information from if they wanted to know about LIS education in Africa, for example, what are they required if students want to join the program or if they want the press wants to know uh, and so on and so forth. They become a voice, they become an information uh, center provider in terms of LIS education in Africa. Responsibility, again, they provide programs, publications, and other activities to promote the awareness also, and enhance knowledge about LIS program, okay? That's leadership, okay? Maintain schedule of evaluation, reviews, and making it available on request for different programs, when they are going through the assessment evaluation. Okay. Maintain directory of institutions of allies programs in Africa, especially those who are certified, let us say, who met the standards, they will provide a list of those programs for students, for educational institution, for the press, or for any person who wants to know about uh, allies uh, education or programs, programs, let us say, availability of programs in uh, different countries. Yeah? They do that kind of work. All right. So these are just conversation um, that we start in the area of allies education, uh, which we will take it I mean, seriously, and since we have also an organization, as I have said many times, Aflia, who will uh, be the leader uh, in this area. So now if you have, uh, with the remaining time, if you have any questions, I think Dr. Elonge, Ayo Elonge will um, entertain that, right? yeah thank you very much prof for that insightful 
full and detailed presentation. As we said earlier, this is just the beginning of the discourse. You know, the AFLIA, uh, in line with our section, uh, live picture, you know, we are going to have forum interested members, class educators. We have opportunity to comment. The first to raise, sir, is uh, from uh, somebody from, the, from South Africa. Uh, from South Africa, uh, Fred Kakua, the pronunciation. He said that this is a great innovative thought and very important for our time. South African LS schools are leading the transformation. And a good first step now is to harmonize the diverse curricula in Africa, LIS. So now, sir, how can we harmonize this? I know you've spoken about this. You know, we have different allies in different countries in Africa. So do you, do you have any idea though how we harmonize our curriculum in Africa? Over to you. Uh, yes, that's the purpose, really, of this uh, webinar and discussion. And that's the purpose of having also a section in AFLIA, is to harmonize that through the standard, because the standard has, one of it is, uh, the, the a standard is curriculum, for example. Uh, how do you develop a curriculum and what kind of curriculum is needed for LIS education uh, at that level? That's the way really to harmonize, bring it together and develop a standard curriculum in many ways, okay? That will be AFLIA's responsibility about how to create those harmonization through the curriculum, the standard on curriculum area. It's up to them. And I understand now what you are saying in South Africa, probably you have different kind of program of LIS, okay? Now, how do we harmonize that is through creation of standard that all these programs in South Africa, if they want to graduate quality education students for Africa, we are talking about for Africa because South Africa is a part of Africa, <laughs> okay? That they have to support that standard in harmonizing their own curriculum based on the, the standard that has been uh, provided. And it requires collaboration here in many ways. You can't just say, I have developed this program, I can just stick on it. Or I have uh, uh, dropped the L award and I am now a school of information science, I can't go back to, you know, that kind of thing. But that can be discussed in many ways. A lot of discussion is going to happen. Okay, how do we bring all these programs in one place and harmonize them in terms of curriculum in terms of faculty and student requirement, that kind of a thing. So it is up to the discussion that is uh, coming through IFLA through either it is committee and participation of practitioners also. This is not only left to, uh, to educators. Practitioners will also participate in many ways in this discussion because they are the receivers of these graduates. They are the ones who are going to employ these graduates and they have a lot of input on what kind of graduates do they need based on the uh, standards and based on future development of library and information science. Okay. Prof, okay. we seem to have, okay. We seem to have lost uh, uh, doctor. So I will I'm just back. go. You can, you can, oh, you are back. You can okay, continue, okay, cool. continue, please. Continue. Yes, yes. Uh, go ahead uh, with another question. Okay, there is another question. Okay, I see, is I think Doctor Ayo has got a problem with his um, uh, connection. 
Okay. There's another question, Prof. How can someone, especially a fresh graduate from LIS program, get involved in assessment efforts? I, you probably will understand that better than I. Yes, I'm, oh, this, I'm glad you asked this question. Um, now, this is really a, a kind of community collaboration. Now, during the assessment of the program, um, students will be also asked input about that program if they are satisfied from what they are learning, if they are also involved in some kind of decision. Because I led for many years in uh, two library schools as the chair of the curriculum. So, on that committee, curriculum cha chair of the curriculum committee, and then that committee. I always had a student on okay, that committee who will express his or her opinion representing the student body. In this case, we have the American Library Association student chapter, which, by the way, I will also mention a later on for Aflia. Now, that student will give input on the topic that we are discussing from the student's point of view. And also during the, let us say, certification, students will be interviewed about that program. It's a part of it, okay? So, and that their input will be also taken seriously. If improvement needs to be made, you know, to satisfy the student needs and so on and so forth. So student will be also a part of uh, participants. In this uh, in this process, yes, I'm, I'm glad you asked that. And, yeah. and by the way, uh, uh, let me just add this. By the way, Aflia probably will also create just like the American Library Association or any other organizations uh, in the LIS uh, area or field, maybe student chapters, student committees of Aflia. Okay. Uh, Okay, thank you, Prof. There is quite a number of questions from students, but they all seem to relate to the same issue. Okay, there is another, uh, uh, Omar says, policy formulation in Africa are always made perfectly, but implement implementation becomes a, a persistent problem. What are the structural framework for smooth takeover of the said subject matter? Uh, the, the last one said me, what is taking over what? What, 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 what? what are the structural framework for smooth takeover? I think uh, take, smooth take off of this subject matter. I think the curriculum and the standards that uh, AFLIA will be developing. Yes, okay, that's also a very good question. Yes, uh, now when we say AFLIA is responsible, to implement because there is implementation also at the end to implement this uh, as Africa's LIS educational standard. So now it is up to AFLIA, uh, AFLIA to implement this. And I understand what uh, the person who is asking question is. And it is really a matter of concern for many developing countries in Africa. They make a very nice policy, very beautiful, but it is not implemented in many ways. It just either stays in the office or it is not disseminated. But this one requires action-based uh, uh, work in many ways by AFLE. Otherwise, why do you have a standard as a policy? Why do you have a standard if you don't implement it? So one of the areas is the implementation. So I'm sure Af Aflia uh, uh, will work on that and will be held uh, responsible for that, as I have said. And we have the chair of the section, uh, Dr. Alonge, uh, uh, will comment on that if he wants. Yes, other questions? Okay, there's two questions that are similar. There's one from Facebook and one from Zoom now. Uh, the question is, thank you for information an informative session, Prof. 
uh, schools in Africa are quite diverse. Other focus on undergraduate, while others only on postgraduate. How can AFLIA encourage these schools to buy in? Taking into consideration that each country does accreditation already or at a country level. So the, I think it's also similar to the one from the, the Facebook page. Yes, uh, this is also a very good question. You see, uh, it raises now a lot of questions, uh, good questions such as that. Uh, we already have uh, accreditation uh, from the uh, state, from our nation, and how do we bring in continental accreditation? Um, that does not really uh, create a problem in many ways. Uh, if, if you have a body that, or a commission that assesses the program for that nation, that's fine. But now we are talking about standardizing the education in Africa. I know some of the programs are provided at different levels, certification, it could be undergraduate, it could be masters and so on and so forth. Now it is AFLIA and it is members who will decide, especially related to this new standard that's developed by the Continental Association, let us say. So any library school will either follow or not follow if they want. The only thing differences are those who follow the AFLIA standard are certified by AFLIA as meeting the standard in many ways. There are, let us say okay. in the USC here, Somebody. there are those who are not really accredited programs. Now, what happens to those if they will be considered as not accredited <laughs> through the standard? So I think that will be solved uh, along the way, yes. Someone is asking, oh, will, uh, will, the, uh, will AFLIA have the muscle to enforce these standards uh, and the, to enforce the, the, the improvement of the curricula and, and to enforce the standard? What muscles will they well, the muscle of Afria, AFLIA is our collaboration. LIS schools must collaborate with AFLIA. If they want to have a similar standard, they must strengthen both financially, both professionally. That is really what associations needed. I cannot say now, speak on behalf of AFLIA on the muscles of uh, Af AFLIA, but AFLIA is also developing. Uh, in many ways, okay? So it, it can uh, develop that muscles that you are talking about, organizations, institutions, and we all have to help AFLIA in many ways. So the help should come also from us. How do we strengthen AFLIA in this area? What individually or organizationally, what are we going to contribute? Being a member, for example giving ideas, participate in the discussion. That really gives the strength to Africa. Many times we leave responsibility on one organization and that organization does not have all the muscles that you have talked about, but we have to help AFLIA and AFLIA I'm sure will be able to, to create, yeah. Other questions? Are you there? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? And now I can okay. hear you. Okay. Um, I like the idea of standards that must be in place. I believe a bachelor's degree is needed for students to be admitted. What happens to students who have worked in the library for a decade with no formal qualification how and where do we benchmark this? Currently, the vehicle that we are using is the RPL methodology, prior uh, recognition of prior learning. We have developed a recognition of prior learning tool based on 
the, the SACWA. SACWA is the South African Standard uh, Framework. How can we ensure that we are meeting the AFLIA standards? Please advise. Yes, um, now I understand there are many ways of becoming a librarian or developing a standards. Uh, now the question is, if we wanted to have, if we wanted to achieve those agenda for Africa, Africa's agenda, that requires, as I have said, high quality educated librarians. Those who don't have a library degree at present working in a library, and I am sure AFLIA through it is new educational policy and survey also to identify the existence of these programs, this kind of uh, library education and so on, will include that within it is a standard. These are just ideas I gave within the, it is a standard, okay? We'll, we'll include that. But the main objective is to have a standard for Africa and how AFLIA will bring together all these different programs that has been developed at, at, at the graduate level or at the practical level in many ways. Some of the uh, people who have been working in library for, for many years and so on and so forth. So it is again up to working with AFLIA to develop various kind of needs for various programs that exist. Yeah, I will say that. I know the work is very, <laughs> very challenging, but if we want to make Africa developed, uh, we have to come together and contribute toward that development. Yes, and, and that is really a very serious issue. Yes. Dr. Ayo, you are on. I think I saw his uh, picture. Maybe yeah, Dr. Ayo. Okay. I'll <laughs> yeah, I think we lost him. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, say, how least students in African, African nation can be recognized and be recommended in Africa? It seems the profession is still not be, it's still not be considered. I think it's, a, it's about our profession not being recognized in, in, in our countries. Yeah, uh, well, this is also a good question, really, that I will just also push it back to AFLIA. That's why we have an AFLIA uh, recognized by African Union and for Africa to represent the allies professionals in Africa. So AFLIA will make statements, AFLIA will conduct conferences on policy matters, on recognition of the profession, the value of the profession, because many they have not really grasped at the government policy, the importance of knowledge, Everything starts from knowledge. That's why many countries have difficulty in development because they don't have a data bank of knowledge where people can go and consult and educate themselves where researchers can go and develop their ideas. They don't have that. Some nations, they don't have even national libraries. Can you imagine not having a national library just just uh, relate that not having a national bank. I asked one uh, banker uh, on that area. He told me there will be a chaos in the financial area. So there might be a chaos in the knowledge area now when you look at using knowledge for development. So we have to educate also policymakers the importance of uh, of, of libraries and information centers. And they can look at the West, the North, how they have developed, they have used the libraries in many ways for people, ordinary people to access and educate themselves. And we don't see that in Africa. We don't see that, unfortunately, but that is required to 
meet to reach those uh, agenda 2063. How do you reach agenda 2063? So we have to educate our policymakers. And I agree with the uh, person who asked this question. Uh, there are those kinds of problems of recognition also, recognition. That oh, is okay. another area FLA will work on, yes. There is another question that would be, I think, our last question. I'll, I'll hand over to Dr. When I'm done. Uh, the question says, how to ensure sustainability? And, and the, the strategies identify looking at how different government policies can affect such an effort. I'm not sure if you, I don't understand it. Maybe you understand it better. You want me to read it again? No, no, that's fine. I understand. Okay. And, and it is a legitimate question in many ways, because here what we are dealing with, we are bringing a standard from the continental point of view. And then you have a nation that's already established that probably has it is policy in the area of LIS education. So there must be a dialogue between African nations, either through AU or through ministerial meetings that happens very uh, soon, an agreement. And here it requires also a support of AU, uh, providing a statement saying that this is an important standard, this is an important initiative. It requires a support of all African nations in many ways. Probably Afliya can, Afliya can do that. And I understand there are a lot of challenges along the way, especially when it comes to nations in many ways, having already their own infrastructure. How are they going to uh, work together with AFLIA with the new standards? I, I understand there are those kind of things, but I think it will be worked out. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. I think we reaching towards the end. Um, there's quite a number of questions that are coming up and I don't think we have uh, uh, the time to cover all of them. So I think we can have the conversation on the Facebook. I know the List Education has now established a new Facebook page. We will have to continue with the conversation and then we'll be able to answer them, some of the questions. I'm yeah. not sure, Prof, if, uh, if you, you can also go through some of the questions and maybe uh, try and answer them online or on the, on the different platforms that we have. I would really, really like to thank you for such a good and a wonderful um, <laughs> presentation. And I've seen the comments that uh, the accreditation bodies should have been uh, uh, invited into the webinar so that they understand what the librarians want and what we are looking at. And on behalf of AFLIA, I would really like to thank everybody. And I know that there is going to be a report or some, of some sort formulated that will be handed over to Aflia. I'm not sure um, if Nkem can quickly say something about it. Are you, uh, are you available, Nkem? Hello, yes, I am. Hello. Oh, you can, can hear me. Yes, you can speak. Yeah, we can, can hear you. Just a, OK. Yeah, what, what from, from the conversations that has started, I believe that AFLIA will want more people to make their inputs. Because like some people rightly noted, there are already bodies that regulate um, curriculum in, in different countries. We need to bring everybody to the same table so that we can discuss more. The important thing is to have that standard and then the quality control to ensure that wherever any librarian is trained in Africa, the person can work in another <laughs> country to ensure that we are all learning the same thing, considering the global um, happenings in the information sector. Yeah, Afia is on top of it. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Aiken. Thank you also. Uh, um, the, the lady that took from me, apology for being away, we have technical issue here. So once again, Professor uh, Abdullah, we appreciate you so much for uh, leading this discussion. 
We appreciate you so much. As, uh, as she rightly said, we have a, a Facebook group. And from that, within that group, we're going to create another serious group for LIS educators alone across Africa. And I know that the technical uh, and in Africa, we disseminate that information to everybody. Once again, we appreciate you. And uh, to inform you again that we have this webinar recorded and it will be available on the link that has been sent to us. And also,